in the year's 1879, but the history's not our own. Everything changed on July 3rd, 1863, during the Battle of Gettysburg. The dead rose up, the shadows darkened, and a reckoning had begun. Humanity's worst nightmares now walked the waking world. Everything seemed to be headed to hell in a handbasket. Humanity, however, was more resilient than the terrors expected. A secret war began between the darkness and those who would stand against it. A few sturdy folks from all walks of life, from school moms to nuns, from snake oil salesmen to steadfast soldiers and children to old coots, have risen up to stand between their fellow humans and creatures born in the very pits of hell. Some were fated to fall, but others stood firm. For the next hour or so, sit back and listen to the stories of horror and heroism, recounting of the sacrifices these unsung heroes have made. Enjoy these tales from the Deadlands. Be warned, however, these tales are not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Knights of the Smith Dinner Table actual play production of Tales from the Deadlands. Um, so I'm not sure if that picked up your scream or not, Luke. <laughs> I was going to say, is that how this episode started? <laughs> um, when uh, last we left our uh, our Western weirdos. Oh, I like that one. Keep it. Y you want me to keep that one? I, with yeah. the alliteration and everything? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, Wild West weirdos. They had sat down to dinner with Pennington Smythe and Dillinger. And we're discussing what it means to be members of the Twilight Legion. I have a question. I have an answer. Do they just let Daisy, like, come to these things and yeah. hang out? Because and... they don't really have anyone to watch me. And, I mean, do I really need watch, though? Yes. Just to keep you from murdering any other pe children? Child. That's because we keep a good eye on you. I made friends. And much like that, that thing said on our Twitter feed, her parents didn't die from dysentery. They died from dysentery. <laughs> that Man. made me chuckle. <laughs> um, I'm not going to verify whether or not that's true because we are going to have flashback episodes for or it's flashback not sections true. for each I would of the, never uh, hurt my mom. Pinnacle but, of the paradox of talk shit get hit. Let's go, dude. <laughs> anyway, right at the end of the session, there was a knock on the door, and Edmonds seemed surprised when he peeked out through the spy hole. And then he started to swing the door open, and that's where. Way to go, Wink! Who's behind the door? Indeed. Who is behind the door? <laughs> I can't Damn. take it anymore! Is this so, how you um, spent how, all your time? How's everybody doing? Everybody okay? Everybody fine? <laughs> is that what the person at the door is saying? No, that's me stretching this out so that way Luke... <laughs> oh god, I just makes <laughs> random noises. Oh god. Anyway. As the door swings open, standing on the other side is... None a other than short Chinese man wearing spectacles and kind of dressed up in a business suit almost. And he is holding a uh, an envelope which he hands to Edmonds and says, Please give that to your friends as he motions towards the five of you. It's our eviction notice. I was told to deliver this to you by one big ears tap. I shall Probably await. an invitation to uh, cook with his cook. Uh. Edmonds walks the envelope over, sets it down on the table. It's Chuck's date with destiny. I'll help you, Chuck. I'll open the envelope. Take a look. Okay. Inside, in... Perfect calligraphied English is a, no, a letter addressed to the troubleshooters who helped put 
uh, Thin Noodle's Ma in his place. Because he never did seem to bother to get your guys' name. Nobody asked the really important questions, now do they? And in it, it is, it, it states, my friends, I would be greatly honored for you to join me tomorrow at noon for lunch to discuss repayment of the favor that I gave you previously. Oh, yeah. Not even 10 minutes a out of the damn favor door. favor for a favor. Signed, Big Ears Tam. And that's exactly oh, well. what he wrote, is Big Ears Tam. What? That sounds very reasonable. This is the part where he's going to ask us to do something that's probably going to incriminate or um, dehumanize us in some way, shape, or form. And Dillinger exactly. says, yes. it's, it's very happen. possible, yes. But the gentleman is, the Chinese gentleman is still standing right at the door waiting an answer. And I respond back in Mandarin, we'll see you tomorrow. He nods, bows, and then turn and leaves, and Edmonds closes the door behind him. And uh, Pennington Smythe looks at you all and says, well, that was unexpected. I, I understand you did have to deal with Tam to figure out where I was, but I... Real nice guy. Would, oh, oh, no, no. He truly isn't. He was nice to me. He even said that he'd uh, have his uh, chef show me how to make some of those Chinese dishes. Hmm. He's also owed a favor by us. Right, but we also made him agree it implicitly that it would not be anything that would harm the Explorers League. That doesn't mean a whole lot, I don't think. There's quite, there's quite a bit that the Explorers League does not cover. Like, say for example, murdering innocent civilians. They're not in the Explorers League, they're not covered by that. And I do not put this, I do not <clears throat> put it past this person. Not even two, two boot lengths down to be honorable about what they're about to ask us to do. Dillinger pipes up and says, well, Tam is indeed a man of his word, and I don't believe he will be stupid enough to ask you to do things that would violate your own personal morals. See? Nice guy. That being said... He will wow. stick to an agreement to the letter. It's he will... beautiful how the letter of an agreement can get you all the way to the very climax of the actual completion of the job, only to realize it has gone against your morals. It's funny yes. how the way it works like that. That does happen from time to time. However, I think in this instance, Tam may have bigger fish to fry, so to speak, than worrying about us. And uh, I think he might be turning you against others, other triads, to be perfectly honest, because they're always performing intrigues against one another. But you won't know for certain until, well, you go and speak with Tam tomorrow. I've got a feeling there's going to be a lot more blood on our hands before we leave Shanfan. Dillinger speaks up and says, sadly, that is usually the case, especially for those of us who are not quite as Asian in background. Y'all are fretting over nothing. This is going to be just fine. I've got a good feeling about this. It worries me more than anything on this planet, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Me, me and Tam had a bond. Like, you were there. We, we bonded. We're 
We're buddies now. It was a vibe. It was like a spiritual connection. We like it was like we that touched, far. it was like we gingerly touched the tips of our penises, but like in our spirit forms, like astrally. It was crazy. <laughs> <What the> <laughs> I don't think it was quite that deep, but <laughs> go off if you want. That's fine. Go off, King Slay. Fuck. <laughs> As I, I, I can't believe I managed to keep a straight face saying that. As I make sure all of my weapons are loaded to bear for tomorrow. <laughs> just, just in case. All right. It's been a long fucking week. Yeah. <laughs> True. But, yeah. Okay, I'm so <clears throat> before you guys head off to bed, is there anything else you'd like to ask Dillinger or Pennington Smythe? Can I have dessert? Indeed, young lady, you can. Can I get some reading material for the for the road? Ah, and Dillinger says, please feel free to to take a look over here. And you see, of all the things, there are a lot of uh, books that are written in other languages. Primarily, Latin seems to be the big thing. However, for just as many books they have in Latin, they have just as many copies of the Tombstone Epitaph. How Lacey's doing? Tombstone Epitaph? What the fuck is that? It's the paper that Lacey O'Malley writes for. Yes. It is, most people consider the Tombstone Epitaph to be at the very pinnacle of yellow journalism. Okay, so what? there's like a shit ton of like, there's, so there's a shit ton of like Latin books, and then like as many a bunch of tabloids, like new bunch of tabloid newspapers. Okay, right. But when when we talk to O'Malley, he like leaves codes for the the Explorers League in the Tombstone in the, Epitaph. In the tombstone, yeah. yeah. No, I was just, I, my, I, my mental image was, like, messing with me on that one. What I was, was like, different wait, dates. books? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they are the national edition of each month, going back as far as when you leave through them, all the way back to 1876. Um, one thing we're lacking, provisions? Like, checking my box, uh... Like, I'm running low on my shotgun shells. The wagon's awfully bare for sundries. Where do we get provisions from? I can send our batsmen out to obtain any supplies that you need uh, prior to you needing them. I don't think you'll be leaving town yet, will you? Unless you have someplace else to go? That I, I, meeting that Chuck agreed to for the uh, with, with Big Ears Tam. That's actually here in town, right? That's what I mean. Like that. That's literally the only thing that we have like going on right now. So anything else is kind of fair game. We're not going anywhere. We, Chuck, we've got plate reason to stay. Yes, Daisy. Am I ever gonna see my aunt? Where's your aunt live again? In California. We're in California. Where in California? Well, we were taking the train, remember? Uh-huh. And she's a teacher. And... And maybe... Maybe California? Well, we will, I mean, we haven't explored all of Shan Fan, so she might be here. And if not, we can, I doubt she's in Lost Angels, because that place got exploded. That sounds familiar, though. Right, we've been there. That's where the big bomb went off. You think my aunt got bombed? I doubt it, because you didn't act like that was where we needed to go before. No, I don't think so. 
Like, I know there's Sacramento. Does that sound familiar? Sargento's? No, it's not Sargento's. Okay. Um, well, what we'll need to do is we'll need to find a map of all of California, and then we can look through the it's towns California. and see if... It, it is California. I remember. It's California we need to go to. She's we're, in we're... California. Okay, we'll find her then. Realizing that this is a circular argument about the fact that we're in California. So yeah, we'll, we'll just, you know, we'll ask around, what's her name? Auntie? Okay. What's She's your a... last name, Daisy? Landry. Okay, is is she Auntie Landry, or does she have a different name? She's Auntie. <laughs> All right, we will look around she, for Auntie. She's a teacher. Okay, we'll find schools. Thanks, Chuck. No I problem. A, I give Chuck a big hug. Your aunt's literally the Little Caesars of fucking NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> she's in California. And she's a teacher. <laughs> we're in California. Dude, it's just, dude's where, dude, where's my aunt? She's a teacher <laughs> in California. Dude, welcome back to Dude, Where's My Aunt? Where's your aunt, dude? <laughs> One dude's actually looking for, like, his father's sister. The other person is looking for their misplaced ant farm. It's quite a... a, <laughs> a, a lofty romp through a fun, comedic adventure. Right. And then I'll, I'll look at... Uh, since we're taking orders, uh, could I get a map of California so that once we're done with this, I can help Daisy find her aunt? Absolutely. Thank you. And I mean, perhaps you should look for her sooner rather than later so that way this child can be back with her family. Did I tell you what happened? Yeah, you tell them what happened. I've got to go get I feel like I need another bath after the day. We got a busy day tomorrow. And Chuck leaves. <laughs> I'm going to sit there and tell him my whole story. Okay. <laughs> um, what about the rest of you? What are you guys going to do? I'm going to... Uh... Is it nighttime? Yes. So as I'm telling this story, I'm going to fall asleep on his lap. <laughs> Okay. This is like the, the night before. This is still like the night before, right? Like before, before you go to meet Tam again, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so I want to, I, I do want to like continue to do some of that reading, just like all up in a room and do some studying because I saw some shit that scared the crap out of me um, over the course of the last few days and not one of it was something I recognized. So I think that arming myself with knowledge is probably the, the safest bet. So between trying to learn Latin and trying to arm myself against creatures that exist in this world, I think uh, that'll be how I spend um, my day a little bit <clears throat> in a lunatic spiral, getting all isolated and weird. As you're grabbing a, a couple of those books in Latin, uh, Pennington Smythe says, make sure that you grab a few of the uh, tombstone epitaphs. I have found that they are far more accurate than any oh contemporary newspaper. Lacey does a good job of rooting things out. Grab a couple of them, sure. Like I'll use I'll go through them as well. I don't have any like actual research skills, so this is literally just like me doing my thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Man, I'm just gonna relax. Not <clears throat> not next to but kind of near Goodman. As he's flipping through the epitaph and stuff. I'll be smoking my pipe, like, just kind of in, a, in the sitting room. Okay. Oh. I looked over at my wife, and him. she's looking at me like she was going to say something, and then she just shook her head no. 
No, I was going to say something into the mic. I thought you muted me. Oh, no, I didn't mute you. Oh, okay. Um, when he says Lacey, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell him about how Lacey's a boy and Lacey and I are <laughs> friends and that um, I actually, one of my, my, my favorite sibling um, was Lacey and what happened to Lacey, she was amazing. She was such a good sister, and I'm going to cry. Okay. And that's when I'll fall asleep. Perfect. Good cry. And what was Tilly going to do there, Pam? Tilly's going to join in looking through a few of the books and seeing what else she can learn. All righty. So whiskey and a study party. Let's go, dude. Go ahead and make your research rolls as you guys are looking through this and give yourselves a plus two. Mine's just because, killed, yeah. Yes, uh, because Dillinger and Pennington Smythe are more than happy to help point out things. So, and you said it a plus two? Correct. Woohoo! Oh. Oh, both both Doc Tilly and Goodman. Goodman got a raise. So the Latin books aren't of much use. However, Mostly as you're Latin. going back through some of the older epitaphs, particularly 1877, um one of the things that stands out is one Samuel Hellman penned a whole special edition just about the city of Los Angeles. And reading between the lines, you kind of get the feeling that he obtains that, that Sunday meal. Uh, sorry, Reverend Grimm obtains the Sunday meal through nefarious means, but Hellman was not able to figure it out. The weird thing is, is the editor's note at the very end from a, uh, the editor of the Tombstone Epitaph, not from Lacey himself, states that Samuel Hellman disappeared shortly after he sent this packet. So clearly he hit something close to being accurate. Um, however, one of the things that really stood out to you, Goodman, is the fact that he does mention, albeit briefly, that once a year, all of the bishops of the Church of Lost Angels meets up with Grimm for one huge uh, meal, usually around... Um, today. Oh, shoot. No, not today. <laughs> Sorry. Nope. About, usually around last week when the bombs fell? No, it, it happens... This meal happens on August 23rd every year. Now, granted, right now it is um, February, I believe. It might be January. Let me Miles open up away. my... Miles away. Yeah. It's, it's only January 8th. I know it says 7th on there, but a day has passed since the last time I advanced. So to recap, to make sure that the note that I wrote here is correct, Samuel Hellman had this whole issue that they wrote on Lost Angels. There's an editor's note at the bottom stating that Hellman vanished because the stuff that he basically cracked into while writing this issue was a little bit too close to maybe some, some dangerous information. So this dude vanished, and it mentions that there's an annual meeting of Grimm with his bishops on the 23rd of August. Mm -hmm. And that's the only time throughout the year that all of them are in the same place. This is good um, storyline going on right now. It, indeed. It got super quiet there for a moment. It did. It's, it's never a bad time <laughs> to try and learn more about the world. <laughs> All right. Um, 
And by the time that you're able to, to disseminate that information, were you going to talk to Tilly about what you saw? So as I'm kind of like going through it and like, like going through the research, I'm assuming that we're doing a little bit of like a kind of like parallel, like collaborative studying. So like going through stuff and like pointing out things we find interesting. So um, if Cole, you said you were with us too as well, right? Just kind of hanging out. Yep. So I'll point that out to both Tilly and Cole um, as I'm kind of like going through and being like, as, as I discover it myself. So it'll be shared information as I come across it. Okay. And were you going to talk to her about what happened with the lightning bolt? Um, yeah, I'm going to basically, uh, as that kind of starts, as the night kind of progresses on and we start like um, drinking a little bit more, <laughs> nailed it. Um, I think that's the point where I'll start like bringing it up and I'll, I'll mention like Doc Tilly. <laughs> Don't, I'm not sure what I saw, but it's kind of why I'm doing all this reading in the first place. It's when you were reaching in with that whole thing with the blood on that symbol. Some strange... I'll, I'll do my best to describe it to Doc Tilly in, in my own, like, Goodman way. Go for it. Um, but, well, that's... I, I'm I'm blanking on the actual description of the actual thing. It was like a wispy electric kind of like thing. a wispy ghostly little white light that flowed from it to her. Some kind of like wisp. There's no there isn't a much better word for it. Move from the sigil into you. Into you like it touched you and was gone. You saw that? I mean, with my eyes, yeah. But I also had my clock clean pretty close around then. I wasn't thinking too straight. Because my hand kind of burnt after I touched it. Well, I still have no idea what in God's name that was like and through all of our researching th stuff that we're doing here obviously that's not uh we, we don't come across anything that gives us anything to uh to on the nose for that <laughs> no not really but um yeah, afraid not <laughs> as as you guys are discussing it and everything go ahead and make a common knowledge check uh, with a minus two, since you guys have been drinking a bit. As a bartender and regular alcoholic, can I ignore the minus two? I would say yes. Fair. I had to, I had to fight for it. You gotta ask for it. Jesus Christ. Cole, are you gonna... Liquor... Give me the minus two. It's okay. I, I'm, I'm fine with that. Let the karma balance. Don't, don't be weird. And still a two for their uh, Doc Tilly. Cole, were you going to weigh in on this one? Yeah, I was going to weigh in, but I haven't been drinking either. Okay. I've just been kind of enjoying the company. Go ahead and make your common knowledge roll. glass with ice cubes in it just chewing on them so cole that as you're sitting there and chewing over things that date august 23rd for some reason that's that's kind of sticking with you and you're not sure why but with the 16 that you got goodman it just hits you like a thunderbolt god damn it <laughs> That's the day of the Great Quake. The Great Quake that created the maze and put almost half of California into the Pacific. August 23rd. Um, 18, I want to say it was 1863. You mean 68, me. 1868. You mean to tell me 
that Grimm and his bishops got together in 1868 and they caused the great quake. I understand why Mr. Hellman got uh, vanished a little bit. Uh, that is some disturbing conjecture to make. I mean, if that's how you're seeing it, that's how you're seeing it. I mean, like, that. But hang on. If they meet annually on that day every day, Every year. Every year. What if that's a year they didn't meet? I mean, feel free to uh, extrapolate on that. Yeah, please, please stop being silent, everyone. I need somebody else to fence ideas off of here. I feel like I'm talking to, like, I'm, I'm talking to myself and screaming into a silence. It's terrifying. Do, do you want Daisy Char to wake up? Daisy yeah, will Char help if, that, if you wake her see, up. That's, that's fair. But, yeah, like, I, I'm happy to wake up. Being, Charles is in a bathtub with a cigar right now, enjoying the quiet and not hearing, hey, Chuck, hey, Chuck, Chuck, <laughs> Chuck. So, I am Not just that yet. <laughs> luxuriating in this bathtub in silence. So I'm not there. So I'm assuming I got a bath and cleaned up, yes? Yeah. Okay. Babbling about all this. I'm actually gonna pull out my book and try to do some more in-depth research in my book about the significance of that date and if they actually, you know, if there's any information about their meeting and how, and if they met that year or not. Okay. Um, go ahead and make an occult check with your bonus. Uh, so what you remember and what you pick up from your Bible, so to speak, is that uh, the Reverend and his 13 bishops were all in Los Angeles when the quake happened. Um, and they ended up on one of the mesas that were that formed after the quake. They had been starving for days since the quake, and then Grim woke up one day and had an epiphany and he supposedly led his apostles, the 13 who survived with him on that mesa, to find food and to celebrate that once a year on the day that they found the food, they have their, their feast. And I'll relate to uh, Goodman that information. Damn. So it's not right out to say that they may have had a part in it, they may not have a part in it. I mean, I think that coincidences are possible, but with the amount of coincidences that have been stacking up, I don't see that this one would be not, uh, less worth investigating than others, so to speak. And draw on the pipe, let the let the cherry glow a little bit. Blow it out through my nose, because finally got all the fucking blood cleared out of my sinuses. And I'll put a little dog ear on that page of my book, too, just to come back to. Okay. All right. Is there anything else you guys are going to do during the evening, or are you going to head on to bed? While Cole's doing that, I do want to try and see if we can't find some, like, any any kind of inclination as to the symbol we found. Like, if there, if, if there was anything at all. Um, go ahead and make a research roll. Okay. And those who are also doing it can, or if you want to aid, you can aid. I prefer to try and aid somebody else doing this. 
Anyone? Anyone? Sorry, I was putting a note on my character sheet about the uh, the dog gear I put in. Okay. Pam and Nick, what do we got? Uh, I'm not good at research. Tilly's got- just consumed with staring at her hand. I'm gonna, like, do you mind if I look at the hand? Absolutely. I'm gonna, like, actually, like, examine it and see if there's anything. Like, do, do I notice any kind of, like, scarring or anything, like, different? Um, make a notice check with a, let's see, this one would be a minus four. I will spend a penny on that. I was going to say, coming in at a one first. And no better. Wow, it just <laughs> loves that, doesn't it? It just loves to just roll the same fucking numbers three times. What's the point of having a penny if it rolls the same number three times? <laughs> oh, Fuck there you goes. Okay, fine, yeah. Yeah, um, let's see. And you know the what? best you got was I'm a total use, result of one. So I'm going to use my reliable. Oh. I'm, it's a support roll. <laughs> so I get to you, roll again. <laughs> all right. I don't know how that works even. So get, on... The re-roll there? Free yeah, re-roll? hit the free re-roll. Oh, there you there are, you stupid bastard. I fucking waited for you. <laughs> Roll two, two twice, bro. All right. So very, very faintly, right in the center of her palm, you can see a matching lightning bolt scar, it looks like. And it's, it's like, Probably no larger than the size of, like, maybe a uh, the head on a pushpin. Like the old-style pushpins with the little round heads on them. Yeah, so like, like a thumbtack. Uh, smaller than a thumbtack. Like a sewing pin. Yeah, I'll say sewing pin. Oh, so like really small. Yes. That's okay, why you had yeah. the minus four. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Um, I'm going to kind of bring a, bring a candle closer. I'm assuming we would have a candle around. And uh, bring it closer to, to actually, like, take a closer look. And uh, point out to, to Tilly kind of, like, the area where it is. And bring the light away to kind of show her the difference. Okay. And Tilly, I mean, when he points it out exactly, you, you see it. It's there. We need to find out what this is. It's a puzzle to be solved. And hopefully it's a fun one. We do like fun puzzles. But I'm going to take that and I'm going to start to... Um... See, at that point I was going to attempt to do the research. But this was just me doing a notice check. Oh, wait, no! I wouldn't have been able to do the... Uh... Oh, shit. The reliable? Yeah, because that was, I was thinking I was doing the, man, I'm fucking, like, out of my goddamn mind today. Um, Because I was doing the the aid roll, and that would have had the reliable, but then immediately we were doing the notice check, which is not the aid roll. I would not have been able to use the free re-roll. Since you guys called attention to it, I will... You're muted and coming through Cheryl's mic. Damn it, since you guys called attention to it, I will roll for Dillinger and Pennington Smythe. So first Pennington Smythe is going to be with the minus four. Um, all right. He never got patched up? He never got patched up more than what he was, no. Oh, wow. Uh... He's not one to complain. That whole stiff upper lip and everything. All 
All right. Dillinger. Uh, he feels that this might be important. He still feels that this might be important. Benny's remind us that we can go fuck ourselves at any given moment all the time. <laughs> and then, yes, Rutherford uh, Dillinger, Rutherford Ellington Dillinger, his full name, does indeed notice it. And he points it out to you folks as he comes in at an 11 on that dice roll. Okay, so now we are at a point where Doc Tilly should be up to speed on what she has yes. seen on her hand. So, Doc, what do you think of that? Doc Tilly still wants to know more, so we're going to get him with more weird science and see what we can find out. Didn't you say it was a research check? Uh, yeah, it's a weird research science. check. Science. It's, it's a weird a... science. No, this this would be a research check. Okay, well then I screwed that up. That's okay. <laughs> okay, you have research too. Right. And you're like one of the only ones of us who does. All right. So with that total of seven, you, if you had to formulate a theorem you would guess that that rune was made out of some kind of aciferous rock, much like ghost rock. And that when you touched your blood to it, it marked you as well. What you can do with such a mark, you're not sure, but you're fairly certain that your muse will help you figure out what to do with it in the future. It'll just take some time to be able to figure out how to best use this to your benefit. You haven't done the tutorial level yet. Dr. Tilly keeps staring down at her hand and decides she is done for the night and decides to go to bed. All right. Uh, what about Cole and uh, yeah, Goodman? I gotta pinch the bridge of my nose because we've probably been staring at fucking books and pages by candlelight and lamplight, but for hours. So at this point, I'm probably going to call it myself. Okay. Cole, anything else you want to get done? Uh, I'm just gonna take a. Uh... Quick patrol of the uh, the top floor, then go to bed. Okay. And is Charles going to do anything else, or is he going to bed after his bath? Oh, he's going to bed after his bath. He is the he's going to sleep the sleep of the blissfully ignorant. All right. So, as all of you bed down for the night, knowing did anyone take Daisy to bed? Where's Daisy? Did do you leave Daysy there? Uh, we'll actually, Pennington Smythe. Pennington Smythe stretches her out on one of the uh, couches, so that way she can rest, and he covers her up. Aww. Soft spot in my heart for him now. And Not as you guys stuff. all sleep the sleep of the weary, dream the dreams of the just, everybody gains an advancement. Woot woot! Oh, and that is where we'll pick up next time when they wake up after having advanced their fourth total advancement, which puts them into seasoned rank, which means I can start throwing nastier and nastier things at them. Why do I have this as my Lovely. third advancement? Uh, was it only the third? I swear that this one was supposed to be the uh, fourth one. This is, th this is three. Okay, so I apologize. It is the third. Or we, you can just give us two no, advances. No, That's... just one. Just one. Damn it. James, be nice. <laughs> right. Got him. <laughs> Have you met him? Right. I live with him. <laughs> Although he does put coffee on in the morning. I, I mean, that there helps me as much as are... it helps you. There are perks. <laughs> No pun um, intended. 
All right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, for that uh, raise, James, uh, I'm going to do uh, two skills. Okay. Um, I'm thinking, is it possible uh, through some of the work we did today to get uh, a skill relevant to what we were doing, research or occult or something? Absolutely. You're getting something like that in a very basic way will be able to help me uh, yes. with that whole I assist people with roles because making untrained skills at basically everything is very frustrating. It's like, <laughs> man, I love I love helping, but this minus two on this D four is just not forgiving. Um, All right, well, um, check out poppetscoffee.com. Head over to our socials uh, or at night oh, on Twitter. We're not done the episode. Oh yeah, we're we're done. I mean, we're, we're, we got to get the plugs in. Yeah, I mean, I, no, I mean, like we're we're still recording, like we're here. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I hadn't I'm said not, goodbye or anything is, yet. Man, I've been like fucking nine miles, like in the fucking future. Jesus Christ, I'm. I need this long weekend more than I have known. Jeez. <laughs> All right. You can get links to everything from our webpage, knightsofthesmithdinner.com, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. This actual play podcast references the Savage Worlds game system and the Deadlands Weird West Savage setting, both of which are available from Pinnacle Entertainment Group at www.peginc.com. It is unofficial media content permitted under the Media Network Consent Agreement. This content is not managed, approved, or endorsed by Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Certain portions of the materials used are the intellectual property of Pinnacle, and all rights are reserved. Savage Worlds, all related settings, and unique characters locations, logos, and trademarks are all copyright of Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Tales from the Deadlands, Knights of the Smith Dinner Table, and all of its logos are property of Knightsmith Games, LLC. For more information, head to www.knightsofthesmithdinnertable.com.